started out, I didn't really have my DMO established that well. So I got really caught in Facebook scrolling. Um, I still do a bit of that now. But, um, you know, when I thought, okay, yeah, I'm going to go do something with my business, the first thing that I'd do is jump on Facebook because I that's where I did a lot of my business. Um, and because I didn't know in my head what I was actually doing, I would just scroll through Facebook until I, you know, saw someone, you know, do something or, you know, and then I'd comment on it. And then all of a sudden that 10 minutes that I'd put aside for the business was taken up with me scrolling. So that's why it's just really important to have it established in your head what you're going to be doing um, if you have time um, to do it on your business and to make sure that you're doing it every single day. So um, a lot of you, you know, you know that what we do isn't actually that hard. Um, it's just a lot of continuous effort of the same thing, basically. Um, so you need to be doing some, something on your business every single day. So that's why we've established the daily method of operation. So you know what things you should be doing during that day. Um, it's usually the hardest things that you'll find that you should be doing first. Um, so if you're, if you're finding yourself doing really what you find really easy things during um, the day, then you're probably not doing what we call your money-making activities. Um, and that's really important to identify early on in your business what the money-making activities are so you're actually doing those. Um, so that's what we're going to go through um, now. So um, I'm not sure if you guys have all seen this, but I'm just going to bring it up on the screen. Um, maybe. Oh, yeah, cool. Can you see that, the daily method operation on there? Just nod if you can. <laughs> cool. Um, cool. This is um, the daily method of operation. Now, this is a, um, what Celine actually has given us. This was delivered at the conference that we went to. Um, and I find this really handy to be able to use so I know what I should be doing on my business every day. And it basically starts from what you should be doing up the top um, all the way down. So don't just think, you know, you go on to this and say, oh, check Facebook. Oh, yeah, I'll go do that because um, that's obviously something easy. Um, but what you need to be doing is your money-making activities. So your first activity should be um, the very first one. Now, it says there are two new people. Um, I would, if I was um, putting in anywhere from eight to 12 hours a week, you know, maybe it would be two people. But if you're aiming for sales coordinator or above, you probably need to change that to at least five people um, per day. Um, and what that is about is that you're just prospecting people in regards to team joining, you know, looking at the opportunity. So it's just sharing with, um, you know, two to five, depending on what, you know, you want to do with the business, um, new people every single day. Um, and as we've always talked about, it's not about getting into depth um, about, um, you know, the business and things like that. It's just simply asking people if they're interested in looking um, into the business opportunity and then it's up to your upline to actually um, tap in with you to speak or you get people into our Zoom calls um, each Thursday. So that's the first thing that you should be doing um, every day. So um, with this chart here, you just write in the people that you've actually been um, speaking to. So the next thing that I would be doing is then following up. So I'd be following up on the previous day's people that I'd spoken to. So if I had spoken to Jane on Monday um, and I introduced the uh, business opportunity to her, then I'd be following, if I didn't get an answer then and there, I'd be following up with her um, on the Tuesday and I'd be putting that into this planner as well. Um, the next thing that I would be doing is um, looking for customers or contacting customers. So, um, you know, just checking in with them, making sure that they're taking the products, um, adding value to them somehow. So it might be sharing, if they've finished the DCN, um, it might be just sharing another recipe with them or just making sure that, you know, if they've got the children's health study, that their kids are still taking um, the, children, the children's product. Um, that's what I would be checking um, as well. So that's another thing that you'd be doing each day. 
Um, the next one is if you do have team members already. So if you've already got team members um, in your group, then you'd be chatting to them. So where it says print PVC, that's so you're checking how they're going with their points. If they're ready, nearly close to a promotion and you'd be just letting them know or encouraging them um, that you know, they're, they're close to the promotion and what they need. Um, you'd also be chatting to them about um, you know, if they're you know, need some more coaching on you know, um, how to get more team members or um, if they need to revisit any training or if you see they're not progressing in a certain area, you just be having a chat to them about that. Um, events, so that's what you know, Steve and I have been talking a lot about lately is really encouraging um, people to get to our Zoom, uh, Zoom events um, but also if you have any local events um, as well, having a chat to people about getting onto them. Uh, checking Facebook, so obviously posting on Facebook, but also just, um, you know, if you are looking at other people's posts, um, just commenting on them. So if you see people that are commenting about, um, you know, you might actually see people that, you know, are talking about, you know, they hate their job or wish they could travel more or something like that. Um, if I see that kind of stuff on some of my friends' walls, then to me that's a really easy identifier that they're looking for an opportunity um, and that's, you know, just something that you could actually bring up in conversation with them as well. Uh, Vox, so that's an old thing. We don't use, use Voxer anymore, um, so don't worry about that one. Um, one simple change, um, so that... Um, is more around uh, Juice Plus. So if you don't have any DCN, you don't have people that are doing the DCN but are just doing Juice Plus or they've maybe finished the DCN, encouraging people to make one simple change um, to their health paths to help them on that. Um, and reading teen books as well. This is a really important one that I make sure that I do, um, you know, each week is that I'm reading um, a book, whether it be, um, I don't actually read, I just listen to it. So I just download um, the audio book um, and I'll just make sure that I'm listening to a little bit of it um, every day, whether that be when I'm commuting um, in the car, whether it be if I'm cleaning around the house, I just put, you know, washing the dishes, whatever, I'll just put my earphone in and just listen to something when the kids are asleep. Um, so just making sure that I'm personal developing as well. So obviously that, that's a quite a lot of things to do there. Um, so we know that everyone doesn't have time to do that every single day, but it's actually just realising how much effort you are putting in um, every day, but also um, that you are doing these things in the order. To me, this is the order that you should be doing it in. Um, this is the money-making um, order, I would say. You know, it's more important to go in talk to people rather than, you know, checking Facebook. So I just love doing this um, as a really good, um, you know, planner of what I'm actually going to do and I remind you as well. I'll put this up in Team Falcon page so everyone has it, but it's just got some really other good things that you can be doing um, as well. Um, you know, checking, you know, your orders, checking team members, they're nearly qualified, um, all that stuff as well. And I love this bit as well, this bit here. Um, a lot of people say to me that they don't know enough people to go and contact. This is a really good memory jogger um, as to who's in your warm market that you can use as well. So I'll put that up in... Um, Team Falcon, so everyone's got that if you don't have it already. Um, but, yeah, I hope that helps because that's what um, I do that's every day is just make sure that I'm doing those activities, whether I've got, you know, 20 minutes during the day or whether I've got an hour and a half during the day. I just make sure I'm getting, you know, that order done, um, done first. And that's um, what I find really beneficial. Um, so yeah, that's all really I have on the DMO. I hope that's added value um, to you all, um, and that you can use that planner as well. Awesome. Thank you, Lauren. That's okay. Um, so really, with that as well, um, what was I going to say? Like, at, like, like, like I said it earlier, but like, if everybody here has their own personal. So it's completely you know, you how much time you're willing to do. Hang on a sec, I've just got someone that's talking. Mm -hmm. That'll be running around the whole day. Give it a name, can you play anything? There we go. Cool. So like I was saying, yeah, it's 
it's about holding yourself accountable. And that's exactly what that, that, that form is for, because every day, at the end of your day, you can look back and see how many people you've actually spoken to, how many people you followed up with. And this is another really important as well, that when you're new to the business, that you are filling out your contact list, because you're basically creating a document that's going to allow you to get kickstarted with your business. And like we all should be using our contact list at the start to get us going, because at the start as well, it's about sharing with friends, sharing with people that you're pretty close with, because you're also practicing as well on how to actually share with people. Um, and then it's kind of once you get through your contact list, that's when you start focusing on the Facebook stuff, because then it's going, it's going to be about making new connections with people, adding new friends and just trying to get in with new groups and stuff like that and just start to build rapport with people. So like every day, like you want to try and set yourself a goal of how many people you want to try and speak to every day. Um, like Lauren said, if, if you want to try and build your business quick, then you want to be trying to aim to speak to five people a day. So if you have your whole contact list out in front of you, again, it's, it's up to you how fast you get through that. So like if you have a list of 100 people on it, and if you spend the next six months trying to get through it, you're going to get the same um, return out of that list as you would if you got through that 100 people within a week. So it's just really, this, this is another reason why we need to be really connected with our goals and what we really want to be able to achieve with this. Because the slower you take, or the longer it takes you, the further you're pushing your goals away from you. Um, so kind of with the goal setting stuff, especially around the business side, when I'm, when I'm speaking with people, um, it's really about kind of getting people to connect with, um, not so much about um, just working with helping people to improve their health or reading habits, but it's really trying to get them to focus on them and what they really want to be able to achieve. Because all we're trying to really do is, is solve people's problems. So by asking people specific open-ended questions, um, like leading into stuff like, um, so um, what, what do you do for work at the moment? And they might say, oh, I have a corporate job. So like then asking them, cool, is that something you love doing? And majority of times, if you ask somebody, is that something that you love doing? They're going, they're not, they're, they're going to give you um, a negative answer on it. That it won't be something that they're truly passionate about it and something that they truly love doing. So then from there, just trying to ask people, okay, cool, what would you really do? Um, and a lot of times people as well, they get caught up doing stuff, not that they love, but they get caught up because of the security of it, because they have that income coming in. And, and a lot of people are afraid to step away because if they step away, their income stops. So it's about really trying to get people to connect with whatever it is they want. So let's just say, for example, I was out last night and um, I caught up with a couple of people. And one of the guys I was chatting with, it turned out that he was basically working most days. He was getting up at 6 a.m. in the morning and he wasn't get home from 9 to 10 every night. And I was just kind of having a chat with him and I was like, why do you do that? And it turned out it's just because um, of security, because he has that income coming in. And it turns out that his passion has nothing got to do with that at all. Um, so I, di I didn't go in talking about the business because he, he knows exactly what I do and I've chatted to him before about it and he wasn't interested in it. But there is a lot of people out there that aren't happy with what they do. Um, so then from there, it's kind of asking people, okay, cool, if, you d if, if, money, wasn't an um, if money wasn't a problem, what, what would you do with your life? What would you be passionate about? Um, and like you're going to get people telling you lots of different things or people telling you, um, like you will get a lot of people that will focus on health or helping people in some way at all. Um, and kind of then from there, um, where I kind of lead. So, okay, cool. If you could find a way to create an additional income that could allow you to perhaps step back from one day a week, what would that kind of look like for you? What would you like to do extra if you weren't working so much? And you're going to get a lot of people talking about travel, spending more time with their kids, with their family. Um, and like you'll even get people saying that they'll, they, they'd enjoy even kind of just sleeping in because a lot of people hate getting up early in the morning. So it's kind of asking all these little open-ended questions. And then even from there, you could lead in, okay, cool. Imagine now if you had an extra thousand dollars a month, what impact would that have on your lifestyle right now? Um, for some people, $1,000 a month mightn't seem like much, but for other people, it could completely change their lifestyle around. Because you never know, like for people that may be struggling with bills, people that haven't been on holidays in a long time. or um, So there could be many different um, 
scenarios where an extra thousand dollars could play a massive impact on someone someone's uh, lifestyle so once you kind of figure out what somebody would do with an extra thousand dollars then i'd say to them okay cool um, you say you, you haven't been traveling now for a while and you'd like to, to go on holidays and if you have an extra thousand dollars a month and that would allow you to do that what would you then i'd ask them what would you be prepared to do in order to make that happen how much time and effort would you be willing to put in if i could say to you we can get this done within the next eight weeks and then automatically you're going to start getting people thinking at a bigger level going oh well maybe i could get it this extra thousand dollars a month coming in so it's kind of really painting that picture for people finding out exactly what they want and then slowly asking them what it, what, what it would mean to them to be able to achieve it. Um, it's never about telling people, oh, you could do this, you could do that or whatever. It's about trying to get them to open up and give you a reason to then say, right, cool, well, then this could help you do that. Um, so then from there, um, like I said, asking that question of um, if you could get that $1,000 a month, what would you be prepared to do to make it happen? So you're not kind of telling them what they need to do. You're getting them to think in their own head of what they need to do. And then you're getting them to commit to whatever it is that they're willing to commit to make that happen. Because at the end of the day, it's, we're never about telling people what they need to do. It's about them to make their own choices, whether um, they're willing to put in the work to make that happen. And then once I go through that with them with $1,000, I'll go through with them with $3,000. Um, because I'm sure you all know that we have the 90-day game plan which basically can set people up for working towards an extra $3,000 a month coming in within 90 days. So again, it's about going through that same scenario. What would an extra $3,000 a month do? And that can completely change someone's life having an extra $3,000 a month. So when you get people started getting excited about that, and when you ask them, when you can, you can say to them, look, we do have a program in place that can allow people to get that within the next three months. Of course, not everybody's going to be able to achieve that, but it really comes down to what you're willing to do in order to make it happen. How much commitment, how much time are you willing to put in? And getting, again, just kind of painting that picture for them and getting them to really visualize that this is possible to do. Um, and again, getting them to commit to how much time and effort then they're willing to put in to make that happen. Um, and that kind of comes down to then the next point about talking about um, residual income versus linear income. Now, this is something that not many people do completely understand, the power of residual income. Now, there's a few different ways that people can, can make residual income. Um, one of them um, that a lot of people focus on is property. And that's simply people want to go away, they want to get an investment property, they want to try and get it paid off as quick as they can so they can have tenants inside, they're renting it out, because then that rent is going to be a residual income for them and it's going to con continue to come in week after week as long as there's people renting out the room. Um, but with us, people can easily work up to that thousand dollars extra coming in a month residual income. And what people don't tend to understand is that once that's set up and that's coming in, that's going to come in month after month after month, whether you're working or not. So you even like having an extra th having a thousand dollar residual income, um, that's going to be worth so much more than someone actually working. 12, 13 hours, a day, 13 hours a day to make an extra $1,000 a week coming into their pocket. Because once you build up that $1,000 residual income, like I said, it's going to keep coming in over and over. But for the guys that are actually working um, hours and hours on end, the second if, if they get sick or if they stop working or whatever it may be, their income has completely stopped. And like, the, and like the greatest thing about having that residual income coming in as well is like, I, when I was away over in Bali, I was still getting paid while I was over there and I was over there for three weeks. As well, the last time I went back to Ireland, I went back for a month. And even though I was away, I was still getting paid, even though I wasn't really doing any work in my business. So like, that's kind of the beauty of residual income is that. And the good thing as well is that it, it will continue to keep building up as long as you put in the effort to, to allow it to keep growing. So again, it's about kind of creating, painting that picture for people because once people build up a residual income, it starts to give people more opportunity to, for what they want to do in life. And it actually starts to show people that they can start to own their own time and have more freedom to do what they want. Um, and that's something that you can't really have with a, with a job. Now, a lot of people love doing what they do as a job and that's perfectly fine as well. But it's again, it's about showing people that by having of residual income of doing something to create that residual income 
that that can eventually allow you to have more opportunity because someone might turn around one day and go, right, I want to, I want to go traveling for a year or whatever it may be. And by, by having that in place, it just kind of lets people to do stuff like that. Um, and the greatest, another great thing with our business as well is that later on in life, once you build it up, you can, if you have kids, you can pass this business down to your kids. So this business will always continue to grow as long as you're, you've put in the, the time and effort at the start to do, to actually build that up. And that's another really, really powerful part as well, especially for people that have kids. Because if you can paint that picture in your head, whereas if, if they're willing to put in work for three to five years to build it up and to a stage that it will continue to grow with or without them, that means when they get to a stage, they can actually pass it down to their kids and their kids will actually basically be set up for life and then they can pass it down as well. So that business is always going to continue to grow and flourish. Um, does, that, does that kind of make sense to everybody? Yeah, cool. Does anybody have any questions at all on that? Around sharing it with people? No. I just want to add um, something that helps me, like with the goal setting and making people visualize um, what they can do. Is I like say to people, okay, what would be what would be your perfect day? What would your perfect day look like? Um, and I coach them through it. So I say, okay, so what time would you wake up in the morning? Um, you know, would you wake up to an alarm clock or just you let your body wake yourself up? You know, what would you do? What would you eat for breakfast? You know, where would you work during the day? Would it be at a cafe? Would it be at home? Would it be at a beach? Um, you know, what would you have for lunch? And like step them through that. Um, and the majority of people aren't living the day that they would love to live. Um, and so it's just basically going through that process with them and then saying at the end, okay, well, if you aren't living that day, that perfect day, are you at least working towards something that will get you that perfect day every single day? Um, and most of the time it's no. As Stephen said before, a lot of people do, I say a lot, a few people do love what they do or they'll at least tell you they love what they do. But they might love what they do, but they don't love the time that it takes them to do it. Um, and that goes for a lot of self-employed people. They all love what they do, but they're the business. Like if they, if you're a, and I, I use a personal trainer because we talk about them a lot, you know, they all love what they do, um, but they don't love the time that they have to put in it. Like if they go on holidays for five weeks, they don't get paid but this is something that can. So, um, you know, that's the power of talking about those kind of things with people and really open it up. Um, and it comes down to confidence about talking about that kind of stuff, but um, that's what we're about. So, um, you know, hopefully, you know, that gives you something to actually talk to people about because it's really powerful when you get into those conversations with people about that. Um, yes, yeah, so that's what. Yeah, it's one to add about, you know, asking them what their perfect day would look like. I find that really helps. Yeah, definitely. Cool. Um, yeah, no, again, that just, that just comes back to visualization with people and getting, really to, getting people really to think at a bigger level because a lot of people are so caught up in their everyday life of this is the way it has to be that they never allow themselves to think that bigger picture of what's possible. Um, mm. So... So yeah, kind of moving on from there then, um, kind of basically saw some tips and kind of some stuff that, that I've kind of been through or up and down since starting the business. And like, it happens to everybody in the business that they get to a stage where they might be thinking, oh, I don't know if this is actually even working for me. Or you, you might have a month where everybody just says no, no matter how many people you speak to. And, and like, this kind of happens with everybody. But what I find is that as long as you keep hanging in there, you can never fail in this business. And that, that's kind of um, from some of the podcasts and stuff I've listened to is that that's what they all talk about is that the only people that ever fail within this business are people that give up on it, that everybody goes through up and downs. Everybody has hard times in the business. Um, everybody gets no's all the time, no matter who you are, no matter how high up you are in the business, people still get no's. Um, and it's about always trying to see past that and continuing to going to keep moving forward no matter what. Um, but yeah, every, every so often you, when, you, when you do have a hard time, you might say, okay, cool, I just need to take a couple of days off and that's perfectly fine. And then you can just jump back into it and start moving forward again from there. Um, 
but kind of some of the other things I thought as well. So for everybody that's on here, you're all, um, you're all doing the right thing um, in order to move forward in your business because you're all tuning into these training events, which is pretty cool. Um, but it, like even for people that when you start up in the business and you don't actually hit your first positions, that can be um, uh, pretty draining for some people as well because they might feel like, oh, I've, I've completely missed the first position or the second position or the third position. But that, that was kind of me when I started the business. So like I missed my fast track for, for the direct. I missed my fast track for senior direct and I missed my fast tracks for sales coordinator. So I actually went back and did a restart on each, each one of them. So I know that any, like, especially for anybody here that has fast tracked in, um, to eat any of the positions, you're already well ahead of me in the business. So it just kind of really comes down to knowing that anybody can achieve anything they want within this business. It's just about making sure that you never give up on it. Um, something that's really worked well for me as well is the personal development side. So, um, so like what I've been doing is I've been com committing every day to doing some sort of personal development. So whether it's reading, listening to podcasts, uh, watching videos, whatever, but I, I, I try to commit every single day to doing something um, because you'll find that your thinking gets a lot bigger, how you actually speak to people completely starts to change. And that's kind of when you're, you start to attract um, better and stronger people into your business. Because when you're thinking at a bigger level and you're speaking at a bigger level, when you're actually speaking to people about the business, they're going to be, you're going to be um, speaking to them in a way that you will attract people that really want to get something happening with this. Um, so that would be definitely one of the tips as well is that you are continuing to do um, some sort of personal development stuff every day. Uh, and if any of you that isn't listening to the podcast MLM Nation, then I highly recommend that you jump onto that and start listening to that daily. Um, so that, that's a, that was a really good one for me. Um, another a really good book as well to, to read is um, a book called Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And that book, for anyone that hasn't read it, it basically gets your thinking, um, it kind of gets your mindset thinking at a business level rather than thinking at an employee level. Because most people um, have an employee mindset which is basically kind of comes back to residual income versus the linear income where you're actually working for an hour, getting paid for an hour. And that book kind of really um, puts it in a, a much bigger perspective for you so that your, your thinking gets a lot bigger with that. Uh, and then once you, get, once you get through that book, that will give your, your thinking a lot bigger at a, at a business mindset, then a really good one to read is, um, is GoPro, which is basically all about network marketing and, and some of the skills that you need. And it teaches you loads and loads of stuff within that. So uh, definitely, if you haven't read those or listened to the MLM Nation podcast, I definitely um, um, would recommend jumping onto them. Do you have any um, some tips you can add in there, Lauren? Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, I was like thinking of the five top tips I had, and I struggled trying to keep it to five, but I will. Um, so yeah, same as Stephen. Events are like that's probably the biggest thing um, that I you know, think that people just have to get to. So our Australian conference next year in June, um, if you want to be earning more than $500 a month, um, you need to get there. Um, people have an excuse or the money, you know, you've got a long time until then um, and, you know, we can make the money with bonuses and things like that. So you just have to get to these. Um, and the reason why is because, there's no, you, you can't explain it. When you get into a room, um, you know, I went to Barcelona um, in October. I'd been in the business for six, seven months um, and only really serious about it for three months. And um, John just said, Lauren, you have to get there. Um, and so I did. I went there. I, you know, made a few express um, fast track bonuses and I'd spent that money on my ticket and things like that. And it's, you just can't explain it. I know that that conference changed my whole vision of what it is. You just see the big picture um, and you just see all these other people that are motivated um, and just normal everyday people, um, you know, not people with big degrees or anything like that, just normal everyday people that are making a lot of money um, and have totally changed their lives because of it. So um, events is just a non-negotiable. Every successful person in a business goes to events. 
um, and even um, you know downsizing that to local events. If you've got local, and everyone does, um, not just DCN ones, but Juice Plus ones, just get to them. Um, you know, it's just really important to network with other people, but you know, something might trigger to you. You might have your, what we call aha moment, um, just by someone else explaining it a different way to you. Um, and that's really important. So just try and plug into those and also our zoom events as well. Um, just try and plug into those as much as you can, because you will have different moments that someone will say something, um, and it will trigger something, um, in you as well. Um, something else that really um, I liked was just to decide to go professional with what you're doing. I think sometimes, you know, we're, you know, we pay $137.50 to get into the business and Celine says it a lot, you know, what if you had to pay $137,000 with this business? I bet you all would treat this business a lot differently if you actually paid that amount of money. So why not treat it like that? Why not treat it like you put $137,500 into this business and treat it like that? Because you've got the money to make from this um, is there for you in the taking. You just have to do the work to get there. So I found that really, um, you know, I, I loved when I heard that. It made me think a lot differently. Um, and it makes you... As Stephen said as well, your personal development is so important. This definitely is a personal development opportunity disguised as a business. Um, so I as well um, do something with my personal development every single day. Um, I've been catching up on all of MLM Nation. I love that. Thank you for that, Stephen. I love it. I haven't heard of that before, so I really love that. Um, I've also read GoPro, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Um, Beach Money is a good one. Um, I just listen to every like uh, something every single day. Um, I listen to a lot of... Um, the UK guys, so I'm a big fan of John Holowaty, um, Katie Ravy, Emma Snedden. If you haven't heard of these people, just friend them. You probably won't be able to friend them. They've got too many friends, but just follow them on Facebook um, because they talk about network marketing. They also talk about Juice Plus, and it's just a really good to see you know, they're high up in the business and what they're talking about um, as well. So friend all of these people on Facebook and start following them and seeing what they're actually um, saying. Um, so um, what else do I love? I've written that down. Oh, sorry, one more. So my favourite quote is, if it's to be, it's up to me. So there are so many things that you can blame in this business, you know, on my kids, you know, I've got to do something with my kids or on my partner or... You know, it's raining outside or it's too hot. You know, there's always an excuse to do something. But just remember that your excuse is just a priority in your life. So if you're making an excuse about something, it's just the priority that you're giving something. So I always, that resonates with me now. Every time I say, oh, I can't make that phone call because I always, it's something in my head now just triggers. And it says, oh, no, you're just making an excuse. Just do it. So, um, you know, if you are thinking that you're making excuses for things, just really think, is it a legitimate excuse or is it just a priority in your life that you're actually putting down the ranks and should you be putting it up to get to that goal that you want to um, achieve? Um, I think that's all. I've got lots more, but we can share them another time. But, yeah, that's probably the, you know, the most important ones, um, you know, that I've got that really helped me when I was um, first starting off. Yeah, cool. You know, it's definitely like even going back on that, treating your business like a real business and thinking mm -hmm. of it that you didn't pay $137 to get started, you paid $137,000. Um, like what I was saying to some of my guys as well before is that if I was to offer you $50,000 right now, do you think you can go away and find 20 new team members within the next, say, four to six weeks? And so if you, if you think of it on that level, and if you truly believe that if, if you were to get $50,000 right now handed to you, that you could actually go away and get 20 new frontline team members in your business within the next four to six weeks. So for anybody that's thinking that they could do that if they were handed that money, it's about using that same mindset and actually getting out and doing it because that could potentially give you an extra 50,000 if you had an extra 20 frontline that you all brought in within the next four to six weeks and get them all moving forward through to um, the sales coordinator. That would be setting you up definitely for an extra 50 grand coming through. 
So again, it's, it's just about thinking at a bigger level and not just thinking it as a little bit as, as something on the side or a hobby or anything like that. It's really about focusing right what it is it that you really want and really whatever it is that you want, you need to try and double or triple that because it's about really thinking at that bigger level because anything really is possible with this business. It's just really down to you and your own thinking and your own mindset. And again, that kind of what's, that's where the personal development stuff falls into it as well because by doing all that stuff, it does bring your thinking to a whole new level. Because like my, my goals have completely changed with this business of what I want to achieve than what I was actually thinking even going back six months or a year ago. So just by basically emerging, um, uh, deep diving straight into that and personal development stuff, it will really bring your mind, mindset to a whole new level. Um, so I think the last thing we're going to finish up on, um, it's really about um, working towards those events that we're doing. So again, the next event is going to be on next Thursday. So, so straight away, everybody should be committing to going to the, the event themselves because every time you, you tune into an event, you're always going to be learning something more. You're always going to, because all, because all we're doing at the event is we're sharing about the pro program, we're sharing about the Juice Plus products, and we're sharing about the business. And that's basically your money-making activities. It's how to actually share each of those. Um, and so every time you listen to it, you're going to pick up something new. You're going to be able to change the way you're actually sharing it yourself. And, and it's, it's, it's going to get a lot easier as well for you the more that you listen to it. Um, and then, of course, every time you invite someone to an event, we're basically doing the work for you to help you get those people on board, either for a customer or for a team member. Um, so it kind of comes back to your, um, to your DMOs then again, that every day when you're chatting to someone, when all you're going to do is just give them as little information as, you, as possible and just say, we have an info session coming on next Thursday. Would you be open to have a look at it? And if they're open to have a look at it, then you jump into the Facebook group, send them that invite, and then maybe you can send them the websites to have a read through as well so that they do a bit of info before they actually tune in for it. Um, and th that's all I've been doing. I chatted to, I, I think I've sent the link for the Facebook event to about four or five people today. And it was just literally chatting uh, with people through Facebook. I was finding out about them, about their life, what they do, what they enjoy doing. Um, and I asked, I think I asked nearly all of them actually, when they told me about what they did, I said, is that what you love doing? And so then it was an easy way to open up conversation then about would they be open to learning about something else? So it's, it's so every day you want to try and look back at the end of your day and say, right, how many people have I spoken to today? Where could I have spoken to someone else? And if, if, you're, if you've only spoken to a couple of people, you can always just jump straight on Facebook and just jump in and start chatting with people. Um, and not just jumping in and just going here, jump on and get the DCN kind of thing. It's about jumping in and asking people questions, asking how they're doing, how was their weekend, what did they get up to, and then slowly introducing um, either the program or the business. But again, asking those questions first before you actually do that. And does anybody have any questions at all before we finish up or anything at all? No? Lauren, do you want to add in anything before we finish up? Um, no, I think that's all. I think, um, yeah, if you guys have anything that you want us to really go through, um, you know, in our next training sessions, then just let us know. Um, we're trying to like go back to you know what you know the things that we really wish that we knew when we first started off as well. So you know just let us know if you've got anything that you think would add a lot of value um, to you as well. Oh, and we need to get a selfie. Yeah, I was just about to say. Yeah, we need to get a photo. <laughs> the most important thing. So I'll take it. All right. So on the count of three, everyone has to make a face or just. <laughs> smile whatever you feel comfortable doing it's going on facebook so whatever you want to do pretend you're enjoying yourself all right you ready yeah enjoy yourself <laughs> one two three good i think that worked yeah. hopefully cool um yeah that's all i really have awesome all right cool we shall chat to you all soon so we kept to our time limit too that's really good Awesome. <laughs> All right, cool. All right, cool. Okay. Ciao. See everyone. Have a good night. Ciao, ciao, ciao. Bye.